हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल माय नेम इज राकेश सूर्यवंशी एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस हाउ डू यू क्रिएट वर्चुअल मशीन्स विद टेराफॉर्म विद द हेल्प ऑफ टेराफॉर्म स्क्रिप्ट व्हिच आवर ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू क्रिएट एनी नंबर ऑफ वर्चुअल मशीन इट कुड बी वन और इट कुड ग्रो टू थाउजेंड्स ऑफ वर्चुअल मशीन्स सो वी विल ट्राई टू राइट द टेराफॉर्म स्क्रिप्ट which helps you to create any number of virtual machine based on the given input size let's understand what do we need in order to create or write your terraform script for creating the virtual machine first of all you need the azure rm resource provider and the virtual machines resource type we'll get to know what are different resource type we are going to use next you need the input data so input data to create and to run your terraform script it could be in the hcl format which is the hashicorp language format or it could be in the json format as our input is flexible which means that you are going to run your terraform script for one machine or it could be thousand of machine so my preferred way to use the input in the json format i'll show you how do you write your json based on the input you have received for your virtual machine and we'll follow through the through our scripting code based on the input which we have received in the json format next we are going to cover different flavors of virtual machine in our terraform scripting so that any type of input you receive whether it is a combination of both windows or linux or it could be only linux or only windows your script should work fine now as per the list we'll also look at some of the optional value in the input data for example your virtual machine might have some of the optional property for example some of your virtual machine required to domain join with the availability set or the vm virtual machine scale set some of them may want to have the public ip address some of them may want to have the dynamic private ip address or some of them may let's say requires the energy rule set configured for your virtual machine virtual machine subnet or the network interface so how do you incorporate all those optional values in the terraform scripting we'll look at that as well I hope this is going to be a very exciting journey to learn this particular scripting which can be helpful to write your code which produce this kind of a dynamic outcome let's begin now first of all let's understand what information you need in order to create the terraform scripting so i'm on the terraform documentation website to create the virtual machine so you have the resource type azure virtual machine in which you can create a virtual machine of a different type if you look at carefully on the notes section this particular virtual machine resource type is going to be deprecated very soon because this particular resource type is divided into a separate resource type one separate for linux and separate for one windows virtual machine it is always better to use the newly available resource type which is dedicated for windows and the linux type so let me go to the windows virtual machine type and look at what information i need in order to provision the virtual machine so if you look at the documentation mentioned here i need some of these information such as a name resource group location size username and password on which uh, which can be used to rdp to my virtual machine network interfaces and some other stuff all the details is been provided here in the documentation some of them uh, are optional for example the availability set which is associated to the virtual machine is going to be optional boot diagnostics is optional so the documentation has provided for in depth detail which you can use simply to create a single virtual machine this if you use simply this particular code as is you should be able to provision the virtual machine but that's not our objective 
or objective is to how do you extend this particular code so that it helps us to create any number of virtual machine. You might say that I can use the for loop or the count loop or a counter on this particular resource type and by running the counter I should be able to create a virtual machine. Yes, to answer the question, yes, you should be able to create the number of virtual machines by running the for loop, but it will have some of the limitations. For example, the optional values, you might not be able to use it or it's not going to be very flexible, I would say. And that's not my recommendation to use the counter on, on this particular resource type. So what do we need to create a virtual machine? So let me jump to the Terraform scripting which I have. So on, I'm on my Terraform code which I'm using, which I'm going to use for this demonstration. So if you look at the provider section which I have in my code section, so I've created the Terraform provider which I'm going to use. So I'm using Terraform backend file for storing my Terraform state file and Azure RM provider which I've defined in my provider file and I have the cloud foundation from where I'm going to run the different modules. So I have defined number of modules uh, for my different demonstration but just for the this, this particular demonstration you can focus on the domain controller module which is the module which helps me to create the virtual machine. This particular module will passing on the two objects one is the deployment block and the management block. The deployment block, I'm reading it as info uh, from the JSON. So now the question is, how do you create the JSON so that it cre creates the virtual machine? To create the JSON, I have received or created a virtual machine, or created the Excel sheet format for which which produce the you know or showcase the input for my virtual machine type for example this is my input data i'll just maximize it and what i'm telling here is these are the type of server i'm creating name of the server or which basically name of the virtual machine and this virtual machine will be created in this particular network segment so it is the net it has the network information which is subnet vnet and all uh, resource group on which this virtual machine will be part of uh, the IP address type it is going to be a public or uh, uh, static or the dynamic IP address and the size of virtual machine what si which size it is going to be and the operating system type whether it is Linux or Windows type of virtual machine if it is Linux then which uh, Linux version uh, let's say uh, Linux 7.4 Red Hat or if it is windows it is is it going to be a 2016 uh, data center or 2019 data center or windows 10 uh, virtual machine so all those kind of uh, operating system related details uh, do i need to have the additional disk if yes then uh, how many disks i need to have all those details i'm capturing here in this excel sheet and uh, obviously yes i i will also capture some of the taggings and uh, other information such as the any uh, extension type which I need to include in the virtual machine so all those things so I'm including here so the information which I've received uh, which I've captured here it's going to be the input data for my Terraform script now based on the information which is given here in this particular excel sheet what I'm doing is I'm writing the converting this particular excel sheet data into the excel sheet into the JSON format so the JSON I have uh, defined here, I have basically converted into two section. One is the management section and other one is the deployment section. Management is the management aspect of the JSON. For example, any uh, management related uh, configuration such as the tagging uh, policies or the taggings uh, which I have added here. Uh, so I have added in the management sections which are the common tags. Now next is uh, the deployment section. So in the deployment section, what I've done here is I've added the uh, resource group type. So 
any number of resource group which I needed to create or which I need to read basically uh, I'm defining here so for example if you are going to create a virtual machine and for that you need to create a new resource group so you need to define the JSON uh, block for that resource group and you need to say okay this is uh, your resource group and if you are going to uh, use the existing resource group so you need to use the lookup property is equal to true if uh, lookup property will remain false it means it is going to create a new uh, resource group for you so this is the resource group block next uh, we are going to refer uh, take a reference of this particular resource group block into the uh, virtual machine because uh, your virtual machine should be part of your resource group right so let's say you have the virtual machine block here uh, which is starting from here and it goes to till end almost end and now if you look at it, this is just a collection of object and each object has the keys and values so key is going to be your name of your virtual machine so this is going to be the name of my virtual machine which is mentioned here in the name section and next uh, I have the uh, operating system type uh, which is let's say a Linux machine or Windows machine and which uh, resource group it will fall under location type and the networking details which is described in the action set and all the data disk and other information about your virtual machine right and similarly I have the other virtual machine which is of different type let's say Windows virtual machine type so this is the input I have created based on the uh, you know information I've received from the excel sheet so if you want you can create your own different input types so basically the object is to create any number of input type so that uh, why you get the point why I'm using the JSON because if you use the JSON let's say today I have two virtual machine uh, input for two virtual machine but may be possible that I am tomorrow I may have the uh, input received for any number of virtual machines let's say 120 of virtual machine if you look at here right now I'm creating a virtual machine for hundreds of virtual uh, number of virtual machines are more and more so in that case it's going to be really really helpful for me to create those number of virtual machines so this is just one example now moving on to the uh, data controller module uh, which is responsible for creating the virtual machines so let me go and open the module so this is my module for uh, the data controller a uh, domain controller which I have given uh, the name as a domain controller you can give any name so this particular domain controller has a couple of files let me open one of one by one so I have all my first of all I have the local files what I'm doing here is so the input which I've received in the deployment variable which is the object type or uh, which we, uh, we have received from the JSON we are re receiving that particular variable and converting into local file and providing uh, with the help of merge function I'm adding the virtual machine block this virtual machine blocks helps me to understand even though let's say if the deployment blocks do not have any virtual machine block I'm just adding the empty block so that if I'm going to perform any operation I, sh I will not get any error uh, and because I'm going to check if the virtual machine block uh, will have the empty then ignore it and if it does not have empty it means it has some values then it will move on and start functioning on it next what I'm doing is based on the input which I've received in the uh, deployment block I'm collecting all the virtual machines uh, type into the using the for loop so I'm reading the for loop keys and key and value pairs so key is going to be the name of my virtual machine and value is the or the configuration which is defined under that particular key next uh, we are collecting some of the other data providers uh, data resource type for example uh, we are collecting here all the uh, different key vaults uh, uh, which has been uh, used uh, to uh, create those virtual machines for example it might possible that you uh, your organization wants to create uh, some of the virtual machine uh, for this key vault uh, some of the virtual machine for the other key vault when I say key vaults we are not creating a virtual machine for key vault but we are uh, using a key vault to store the uh, credential of virtual machines uh, into the key vault 
Similarly, for the virtual network uh, configuration or the network configuration, uh, it might possible some of your virtual machines require to be created in uh, network uh, hub network or some of them requires in the uh, spoke network or the management network. So based on the input received, uh, input which you have received in the domain configuration, uh, we are collecting all those information here. I know I'm taking this uh, little bit of time here, but this is really an important to understand all those configuration which I have taken. So just just to liberate uh, this particular block here, what I'm doing here is I'm collecting all the virtual machine. I'm reading uh, every record within the virtual machine object, and from the from the record value value section of the record, what I'm collecting here is I'm collecting the network block, uh, which is virtual network subnet and the resource group, uh, which is the VNet resource group, and uh, once I have the information, it might possible that let's see, uh, uh, ten virtual machines, what well, three of them require to create in the hub network, uh, rest seven of them require to create in the spoke network. So you will uh, at the end you will have only two different unique uh, network information. So that's the reason I'm using the distinct function here, so that uh, uniquely I just get the distinct value of the virtual network. And based on the distinct value, I need to call the data uh, provider, so, uh, the network data provider, so that I have the uh, the subnet information which I am going to use to create create the virtual machine. Similarly, uh, we have the same same uh, algorithm applied here for key vault, availability set, log analytics, and the other type of information such as storage account and all, right? Um, I'm also collecting the uh, resource group uh, information because we know that uh, your other uh, the uh, this, the other dependent resource of your virtual machines, such as in key vault, availability says the storage account, virtual network, they might be part of some different resource group. Ideally, in most of the cases, your resources of one project uh, should be part of the one resource, but uh, some organization prefer to segregate the but, the different resources such as in the network resource or the other uh, resources into different resource type then in that case um, we, are, we are collecting all the resource group type in, uh, information and this applying the distinct operation next we have the um, data block so what we are doing is whatever information we have collected in the uh, locales we are reading uh, the the data using the data provider so if you see that i'm reading all the resource unique resource group information data subnet availability set uh key vault and, and everything right so so we, we are uh, reading the data information for the dependent object uh, so that we create the availability uh, we create a virtual machine this is my availability block uh, which you can create it if, if somebody is passing the information about the availability block next we have a uh, you know, separate section for windows type of virtual machine and separate section for uh, uh, linux type of virtual machines so what we are doing here is again uh, i'm looking through the virtual machine object and i'm applying the filters on on the basis of windows and linux virtual machines so what i'm doing is I'm iterating all the record. Give me all the record which is of type Windows Virtual Machine. This is what uh, this is how you can apply the filtration using the for loop. If you're not sure about how to use the for loop, I've already created a video on the for loop. Uh, link is given in the description. You can go through the uh, details of using the for loop in the Terraform. Uh, you'll find it uh, useful out there as well. But this is just uh, the another demonstration of the for loop which I'm doing it here. Next, what I'm doing here is I'm collecting the disk information about my virtual machine. So any disk which I need to associate for my virtual machine, so those number of disk information I'm collecting in my, on my local again, right? Next, moving on to the uh, uh, creation of virtual machine, I need to uh, use uh, two different provider, uh, one for the creation of uh, random password and render string. So I'm creating the random username and real random password with this, these providers. Make sure if you are using these providers uh, to create the username and password, 
what you can do here is uh, you you need to use the keepers block and you need to pass this particular information otherwise your uh, virtual machine will 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 be failing once you have the uh, username and password created i'm uh, next thing you need to do is you need to store the information into the azure key vault so i'm i'm uh, so whatever information if you remember our input data which we have received uh, we are asking for the what a uh, key vault name a uh, key vault reference so whatever key vault reference we have received we are storing the uh, username and password into the key vault so this is uh, what we are doing it here so we are storing the user password the username and virtual machine username and password into the key vault next we are creating the public ip address now uh, in our presentation we have we have discussed about some of the optional parameters for right and one of the things we, uh, which i mentioned is uh, do i need to create a public ip address for the virtual machine or not so how do i make a decision of creating such configuration so in the json uh, what we are doing is uh, based on the uh, information we receive in the json while running the for loop i'm checking whether a particular attribute i have received in the json or not if they uh, i have received the particular attribute in the json what is the value I've received if it is a boolean type and i'm expecting value let's say true then i need to perform operation if it is false then i need to ignore that particular operation so this is what i'm doing it for example if you would uh you want to, somebody wants to create a virtual machine with public ip address then they need to pass the json with this particular property which i've de decorated so this is not not the property or the system defined property or hashicorp uh, language or arm template property this is my own custom property so you can give any name so this is what the name i have given in the json so what i am telling this loop here is i am asking this loop if uh, the uh, current object has this property which is enable public underscore ip address and if the value of the uh, property is uh, true then uh, create a public ip address block if the value of uh, if the object does not exist then it will set the value to false and, and if the value is false you don't need to create anything basically it will ignore it right similarly uh, for next one uh, i'm creating the uh, network interfaces so here if you look at carefully in our virtual machine section the network interface block we are uh, we have decorated as an array type which means that what we are saying here is you are you have the ability to create a virtual machine with the multiple uh, network interfaces because uh, practically it is possible that your virtual machine can have one or more uh, ne network interfaces configuration right so this is what we are telling here and uh, obviously if you have the virtual multiple virtual network configured then one of them needs to have the primary network interface configuration so whichever uh, is the first work item uh, provided i'm creating that particular over uh, network interface block is in primary here and rest of them is going to be the sec secondary work item and if the uh, network interface uh, if the virtual machine requires to have the public ip address associated which i've created in the previous block uh, here i'm referring uh, that particular public ip address uh, here in the network interface uh, to associate to virtual machine not the least uh, which is our main block virtual machine block which is our windows virtual machine uh, type of resource which we are creating this resource requires a couple of properties for example name of your virtual machine location resource group sku site username and password so username and password which we have created in our uh, at the top using the uh, random string and random password block and then network interface block again which we have created at the top uh, so any number of uh, network interfaces which we have created at the top we are assigning those number of network interfaces to our virtual machine next is the store uh, source image type if you are passing the source image id let's say if you want your virtual machine to be created from any custom image or the uh, uh, image which is given in the uh, marketplace then you need to pass the image id and once you have the image id associated you can pass it in the json and then your mach machine will be created from that particular image id instead of uh, you know default image type so this is what we are also considering here 
Next is the availability set. So if somebody provides the availability set information on your virtual machine uh, uh, information in input data JSON, then yes, your virtual machine will show, will be part of the availability set. This is what this particular line of code is saying. So what we are doing is here, uh, we are saying, okay, if the block of record contains the availability set block, then uh, read the availability set ID. Uh, if not, then leave it null, uh, which is it's not going to assign any ability set to the virtual machine. Next, we are adding the uh, source image. So, if let's say in this particular line number 137, if nobody provides uh, the source image ID, then obviously you need uh, the source in, uh, source image information. So, uh, either of them has to be compulsory. That's what the documentation of the Terraform says. So it means that uh, you need to have either source image information or the storage image information. So we are this is what we are doing. Let's say if somebody do not provide this particular block, so we are creating a Windows virtual machine which is on uh, uh, data center 2019. So it is again optional for you, right? Again, we are defining uh, uh, creating a virtual machine with the uh, one OS disk which is compulsory. So this is going to be a mandatory block and. Uh, Similarly, you can have the multiple Azure Diagonal Sticks blue, uh, block, uh, which will store all your virtual machine Diagonal Stick into the storage account. So this is what uh, this code is doing. Next, uh, what we are doing here is uh, we are creating the uh, number of data disk, uh, which is which we require to create for the virtual machine. So any number of data disk, which is provided here in the Excel state, we are creating those number of data disk with the defined size. So let's say we have uh, required to create OS disk we have already covered in the uh, virtual network block. So now these three data disks we need to associate to the virtual machine. So this block will create those number of data disk and at last the data disk will be associated to the uh, attached to the virtual machine using the virtual machine ID which we have chosen at the top, right? Similarly, we have the Linux block or everything is fo follows the same. It's just the uh, the pattern which we are using here is the block we are using is different. Instead of using the Windows, we are using the Azure RM Linux virtual machine type of block. Next uh, is about the extension. We discuss about some of the extension which we need to install in the virtual machine. Uh, so we are using the extension block here. So the OMS agent, let's say log analytics agent, again, it is optional if somebody pass the uh, log analytics information that on my virtual machine needs to be part of any log analytics block, then I'm collect the information which we have collected in the log analytics locale here. If you look at, go back to the uh, locales, we are collecting the log analytics block here. And once you have the information, you are going to look through all these log unique log analytics and you log analytics will be um, provision uh, within your virtual machines, right? Next, the Azure extension, virtual machine extension, uh, which you want to create, and similarly, other type of extensions such as the domain join extension, you can run it as well. So, these are the type of uh, uh, different code uh, we have. Now, to run the code, I'll just show you how do you uh, run the code. So, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the simple command. Let me mint out my provider block uh, which is the uh, azure Terra terraform block which is going to store the state file onto the local so instead of storing the file onto the local i just i would like to store uh, instead of storing the file onto the uh, storage account i want to run it from local using the uh, the azure cli so first of all i'll i'm onto the uh, code block code folder so let me do one thing uh, let me open the code from the scratch. Now let's now let's run the code uh, which which we have defined here. So what I'm going to do is I'm on the code block. So I'll right click on my Visual Studio code and I'll open the terminal with this command. And I'm on the code block. If you look at uh, here. So what do I need to do is I need to run the Terraform init command just to initialize uh, any of the Terraform provider which I'm going to use or the modules which we are using. So let's say if the providers are 
successfully um, it might possible you you would like to run the terraform validate command as well just to make sure your terraform code is uh, validated uh, for any kind of uh, compilers compilation related issues so that is again uh, one thing which you would like to check so my terraform initialization command is completed and i've got the message uh, the initialization is successfully completed your terraform is initialized now now next what do i need to do is i need to run the terraform plan command so while running the play, terraform plan command there are multiple options you can pass on the terraform variable uh, as a tf var uh, and the name of the variable or you can uh, pass on the variable file so what we are doing if you look at carefully here what we are doing here is we are passing the terraform we are running the terraform plan command with the tf uh, with var file uh, attribute and we are passing the lo location of uh, our json file which we have created for for creating our virtual machine right and then this this is going to create the uh, number of uh, virtual machine for us okay so let me run this particular command and let's see if it, it works fine so the terraform plan command has run successfully and you can see that uh, this is the outcome will look like i have the resource group create block which will create a resource group and then uh, i'm reading the same resource group here next what we are doing is for the linux type of virtual machine we are creating the username we are creating the password for linux virtual machine username password and the windows virtual machine password same at the same time and then we have the virtual machine create block for windows uh, we have the virtual machine extension for bitlocker next we have the data disk block which is going to be attached with the virtual machine and we got the network interfaces uh, which will be associated to the uh, virtual machine so here you if you look at that uh, based on the input which we have received uh, we are saying okay we need to have the static ip address and we have, we have defined the ip address in, in our input json type and we also got some of the taggings which we need to add on those virtual machines so once i i'm going to run the terraform plan command next is the plan command which we need to run once you run the plan command and provide the uh, approval it will ask for the approval basically you should have the the list of virtual machine available i'll show you in, in the resource group so this i have already created because just for this demonstration otherwise it will take time so this is what my virtual machine will look like based on the input which we have received if i decorate with the types this is going to be my virtual machine type so if you see that this is the publisher which we have given ip address and all right and these are the number of data disk azure encryptions which we have added encryption is already added which is the type of extension we have added right so this this is what uh, it is so the key takeaways for me here is uh, in this blog how do you write the for each loop right how do you create your local block using the for each and for loop and the distinct function how do you write the optional block on for your resources for example let's say in this case uh, if the data disk has got the information about the storage account if it has not then this is what the uh, the storage account property we are using let's say if the creation option is not been provided then the default creation option we are creating with, with the empty so this is what we are 
doing so this is really important to understand how do you write the optional values so that even though if somebody is not passing the required information or the optional information you are taking care of those optional parameters in your source code i hope this makes sense and helps you to or you know move further for for your uh, infrastructure as a code thanks for watching it if you like it please subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up thanks a lot